Hi, I'm Jamie David with Bernina of America, and I'm excited today to share with you the first overlocker lesson for Bernina Creative Studio. We're gonna learn about a balanced overlock stitch. To do this exercise, I recommend using color-coded thread that will match the threading path on the machine and some light cotton or muslin fabric that you can easily see the stitches so that you can best see what the stitches are doing. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a series of samples that will have stitches with altered tensions so that you can see what an unbalanced stitch looks like to basically clarify the best looking stitch for a balanced overlock stitch. Okay, let's begin by threading the machine in color order and setting the machine for a default four thread overlock stitch. On the L450 and L460 machines, all the default settings for an overlock stitch are indicated with a little dot or a bullet point on the setting um, that's required for a, a, what would be a balanced stitch. We know that a balanced stitch on different materials may require different setting adjustments, and that's what we're going to learn about today. Like any good science experiment, we want to start with a control like experiment or, or section. So let's go ahead and sew this stitch with the default settings on the machine and just check out what a overlock stitch looks like out of the gate. Now let's examine our stitch sample. On my machine here, my sample actually came out pretty good um, as a balanced stitch, but I want to explain what we're looking at here so you can start to understand the parts of the overlock stitch. The blue thread that looks kind of like a little bit like an L or little loops here, um, this is your upper looper. And if you want a good way to remember upper looper, at least for the color coding on our Bernina overlockers, Blue is like the sky or like heaven. And red is like the earth, at least in Oklahoma, or like hell. So you can think upper, lower, and remember it just by using that little mnemonic device. So if we look on the back here, you can see the lower looper makes more of a V shape, all right? And these loops should meet out here at the fabric edge and not have um, fabric hanging off the edge or have the fabric in underneath here really scrunched up. So if you're getting the loopers to meet right at the edge, the fabric's laying flat in there, you're doing pretty well in terms of your looper tension settings. So now we can take a look at our needles. And on the machine here, my needle thread is green and yellow. So I've got two rows of needle stitching. And on the top of the fabric, this pretty much looks exactly like what you're used to seeing on your sewing machine. So it just looks like a straight stitch, two rows of straight stitching. Now on the back, what it will look like is more like a dot. So it might be really hard to see this in the sample. Hopefully when you do your samples, you'll be able to kind of see them a little more clearly. But the green thread on the back here is just a little dot and you can see it's holding that lower looper into that B shape on the back. Now the left needle, which is the yellow thread, is actually on my stitch coming up a little bit. I'm getting, you can see that my, my looper thread here has a little bit of a wave to it and it's kind of loose. So that might be something that I could adjust, but on, on the back side for the left needle tension to be balanced, the lower looper red thread will appear pretty much like a straight line across the bottom and you won't see 
very much of that thread. I can see a little bit more than I would like of the yellow. So I know I might need to do a little adjusting there. But overall, this stitch is pretty balanced. So we're going to move forward and we're going to do some experiments by adjusting the tensions to settings that are really wrong for a balanced stitch so you can see what an unbalanced stitch looks like. Let's begin to create our samples of unbalanced stitches. We're going to begin with the upper looper and what we're going to do is we're going to adjust the tensions to a very high setting and a very low setting and so on each side of our, our sample fabric. So for the first seam I'm going to adjust my setting here really to an extreme um, tension setting. This will just basically give us the best visual of what this stitch looks like when the tension is way too tight on the upper looper. So I'm going to put it between 8 and 9 and I'm going to go ahead and just sew down one side of my two layers of muslin fabric. All right, now while I'm here, I'm going to just flip this and I'm going to sew the opposite side with a really, really loose upper looper setting. So I'm going to take this down to, all the way to one, which is barely any tension on the upper looper, and I'm just going to sew the opposite side of the fabric. So this is our sample with the upper looper. And the first thing that we did was we tightened the upper looper tension um, to like an eight. So if you're seeing something happening on your stitch where you're starting to see that lower looper thread, which is really easy to see here because it's red. So you can see that red thread now is coming over the edge of the fabric to the top of the fabric. Um, you can also see the top edge of your blue loop um, on this fabric on top of the fabric. So this would basically be a situation if you're seeing a stitch that looks like this where your upper looper tension is too tight. Um, and what that looks like on the back um, may look a little more normal on the back. You're still getting your V-shaped sections here. Um, so if you're just looking at the stitch from the back, you may not really be able to see how unbalanced of a stitch that is. So it's important to start to kind of dissect and understand what, what parts of the stitch form where and where they need to land. I can also see in this stitch too, you can, you can see a little more prominently now that left needle, the yellow thread being pulled up here just a little bit. So you're seeing more loops from that. And that could be happening because my upper looper tension is too tight. It also just could be that I need to adjust the looper tension or I'm sorry, the needle tension, the left needle tension a little bit on this particular machine that I'm working with. So the opposite side over here is where we adjusted our tension to loose. So if you, you're looking at the stitches comparatively, you can see I've got much bigger kind of oval looking shapes here. I'm not getting sort of that kind of nice cursive L look to the stitch anymore. Um, you can see that the threads when I roll over with my pointer here, that they're actually pretty loose. You can just see them kind of moving around here. Um, you also can't really see any red thread here meeting at the edge. So if we look at the back side of this, you're going to see more of what's going on when the upper looper thread is too loose. You're actually starting to see the upper looper threads come over here to the back. But you can see how much space I have underneath there and just, just kind of how flimsy this stitch um, is when you don't have enough tension on your upper looper. Okay, so let's move on and let's adjust the tension on our lower looper. I'm going to go ahead and put my upper looper back to the default setting of four, and I'm going to do the exact same thing I just did by tightening my tension on my lower looper first and sewing the seam. And then on the opposite side, I'm going to come back and I'm going to sew with a really low tension. All right, so now we're going to look at our lower looper. And actually, if you think about these when you're looking at them or if you're comparing them to the stitches that were done with your upper looper, you're going to notice that they look very similar. 
Um, in fact, an easy way to think about your loopers is kind of like tug of war. If one's pulling too tight, you know, it's going to pull the other one over to the top. And if it's, you know, too loose or not holding very heavy, it's going to get pulled over to the back. So that's basically what's happening with your tension. So it's not um, a problem that these look really similar to what we just looked at with our upper looper. So the first thing that we did is that we tightened our lower looper. So in the situation where we tightened our lower looper, it, it looks like this. So we're not seeing any of our lower looper red thread here at the edge of the fabric. We're only seeing kind of these blue U-shaped stitches here. And if we look at the back, we'll see our red thread is in fact just pulling that upper looper clear to the back. It actually may be pulling that needle thread up as well. So what I've got on the back of this stitch is really, really short, little tight um, lower looper um, stitch formations happening back here, but this is definitely off balance and you can really kind of get a sense of how that tug of war works if the lower looper is pulling really tight and the upper looper can't compete, it's going to fall over the edge into the back of the fabric. All right, so the, the opposite situation where we have way too loose of tension for the lower looper is going to cause that lower looper thread to come over to the front. So again, you can see just how loose that stitching is here and how much space I've kind of got underneath the, the threads there. And your, your upper looper here is becoming very narrow, um, just little squiggly line there. So on the back, um, you can see that the V-shape in the lower looper isn't as defined. If I run my pointer over here, you can see just kind of how much wiggle room and space there is um, underneath that lower looper tension. So this is what your lower looper tension kind of looks like maybe if it is too loose. Now, with these samples, I have been writing on them what, what it was that I was working with. And I'm just gonna write front and back, even though I kind of know pretty well based on the color of thread, which is the front and which is the back side. But you can make your notes whatever you want. That's the nice thing about using this lightweight muslin is that I can just write on here that here my tension for my lower looper was too loose. And on the opposite side here, this is what it looks like when it is too tight. So now you can use these swatches as a way to reference a situation and, and have a plan of action to correct the stitch tension. All right, now let's check out our needle tension settings. I'm gonna go ahead and put my setting for my lower looper back to four. And I'm gonna work first with the right needle and just increase the tension and sew my row with the tight tension. Now we'll sew with the lowest tension setting. And I'll go ahead and just label this one for the right needle. And I'm gonna just roll right into adjusting the tensions here for my left needle um, as well. So we'll take this one back to the default and I'll adjust my left needle tension all the way up to nine and sew my seam. And I'm gonna take it all the way down to one and sew on the opposite side. just put a label on this real quick and we are ready to check out our stitches. Okay, so now we're gonna check out our needle tensions. And sometimes um, needle tensions can be really very obvious and sometimes they can't. Um, it's a little harder to see what's going on, but if I look at my stitch here where my right needle is too tight, it's, it may be hard to pick up on the camera here, but I can actually see that it's kind of like indenting the fabric here a little bit. I can see a little bit of red thread popping up here as a dot on that top of the needle. And it's like I can also kind of see 
um, this action that's happening that might make me think my looper is a little off balance, but just having too much tension on that is actually pulling my lower looper here up over the edge a little bit um, in this particular scenario where the tension was really super tight on my right needle. What that looks like on the back is that you can't see a hardly at all any of that needle. And like I said, when we have a balance stitch, you'll usually see that right needle as like a little green dot on the back side of the um, seam. On the opposite side, if your needle tension is too loose, um, you will definitely notice right away, maybe not from the top, but if I do come in here with my pointer, you can see I can just pick those threads up. They're super, super loose um, and I can pull pull a whole bunch of space out of them. So you, you'll know right away because they're not gonna hold any of your um, upper or lower looper threads in place. And in fact, on the back side of the stitch, you'll see big giant loops. This is basically a needle tension that has no tension. We put it all the way down to the lowest setting and we just hardly, we have no tension in here. Okay, so now we're gonna look at our left needle thread tension. And it's a little more obvious, I think, than the right needle tension um, to see the adjustments on here. So we adjusted this stitch over here really to the tightest tension. And you can actually kind of start to see, and maybe you can see, I don't know if you can see the shadowed edge, but you can see some waviness in the edge of the fabric. And that's because that tension is so tight, it's pulling everything kind of towards it. Um, and you can actually see a little bit of red thread showing up here on the top. Um, as like a little dot, which indicates that that thread's so tight, it's pulling my lower looper thread now up to the top. On the back, this looks really extreme. You, you don't see any yellow thread. I've got a, a really sharp line here. Um, just looking at this, you might think everything is fine. But again, if you're looking at both sides of the stitch, you would see a little bit of that puckering that's happening and making my seam kind of uneven. And you would see those little sharp kind of points of thread showing up here on the top. It's really easy to see this when you have different colors of thread. It's not as easy to see when your thread's all the same color. So that's why it's important to kind of sometimes look at these things with the different color of thread. Now, when the thread is really loose, again, a little more obvious. You can start to kind of pick up those threads and you'll see that things just don't appear to be holding in place quite as well. My loopers are kind of meeting out here at the edge, but again, on the back side of this sample, you can see all that yellow thread coming up in here that's not gonna hold anything in place. And if I were able to pull this apart, this would almost do what like a flat lock does, okay? Where you start to see the ladders of those needle threads showing in your stitch. So that's basically it in terms of what unbalanced stitches look like and hopefully these samples will enable you to start to see and understand how your how your machine is working and what potential tension settings you should be adjusting to. Thanks for joining our lesson on balanced overlock stitch with the Bernina Creative Studio today. I hope that you will take your samples. You can trim these little thread tails up and if you want to you can just even run a balanced overlock stitch right across the top of those and have these all together so that you can use them to help you troubleshoot the next time you have a scenario with an unbalanced stitch and you're wanting to correct the stitch.